Hi everyone in North America, Romania, Europe, and uh, anywhere in the world. Welcome at the new edition of the Ferraro Conferences uh, online, one of our um, permanent uh, series tackling topics relevant on both sides of the Atlantic and honoring uh, the memory of the men who we believe uh, created the professional cultural diplomacy of Romania in the United States. Our online program is uh, cruising at full speed. We are um, offering um, original and exclusive content uh, practically every day of, uh, of the week. And we are thankful for the wonderful uh, reactions, for the positive reactions, for the praise, uh, the messages um, we have been receiving from North America and indeed from everywhere in the world. Um, we are um, continuing uh, during these um, difficult times, confined uh, ent entirely in the cyberspace. We are continuing to showcase uh, the richness, diversity of um, Romanian history, a culture and creativity. And um, today's guest at the Ferraro Conferences online is someone who knows a thing or two about uh, creativity, someone who has established herself as one of the most uh, talented um, poets uh, and playwrights of her generation, both in Romania and the United States. Saviana Stănescu. Saviana, um, while well established, one of the leaders, uh, leading voices of Romanian literature uh, in post communist uh, Romania, took the radical decision to cross the Atlantic and start anew here in America, in, um, in New York. It was an extraordinary risky decision, but she took that she uh, she but she she knew she uh, had what it took in order to succeed in this fascinating yet unforgiving world of uh, New York theater, and she did. Um, her um, her plays are rightly praised. Uh, for um, a courageous exploration of stringent, yet some, sometimes uh, controversial topics for impeccable writing and for their infectious um, humor. No wonder they have been performed in important, famous, uh, famous places like um, uh, La Mama Theater, 59E59, e uh, New York Theater Workshop, or uh, women uh, projects, women, um, uh, women's project. So um, um, very, uh, very um, uh, famous and important um, uh, theater stages uh, where um, uh, Saviana and her um, and her uh, plays um, received, uh, received um, public and critical acclaim. Uh, Saviana has um, also forged a um, notable career in the academia. She has taught um, at uh, New York University's Teach School, at uh, Strasbourg Institute, at Fordham University, and she is currently um, a tenured professor of uh, theater arts at uh, Ithaca College. Saviana Stănescu, it's good to have you in the program. Thank you so much, Doru. I appreciate your kind introduction. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Uh, you appreciate it, but uh, as I know you so well, you uh, you wouldn't subscribe to everything I've uh, I've said, being so um, so modest. But uh, but you shouldn't be. Um, by any uh, by any measure, you um, were a very very successful writer in Romania, well established uh, voice, um, a name for praised for um, uh, her poetry. 
for your poetry and, uh, and theater. And yet you decided to uh, start afresh in the United States, to move in the United States, in New York, uh, and, uh, and start a career uh, here. Um, what was the lure of, uh, of New York and, uh, and American uh, theater? Why this decision? Okay, yeah, that's a difficult question, and uh, it takes me back uh, on the memory. This is not a show of uh, easy questions. <laughs> Thank you. That. That's cool, you know, I like a, a good challenge and, uh, you know, an interesting conversation. Uh, so, yeah, why did I leave Romania? I guess, you know, probably because I'm an adventurer, <laughs> a rebel. I always like to try new things, to push my limits. Uh, each time I get to one place, I, I imagine that I could do more, I could discover more. And now, honestly, I'm generally the type of seeker, an artist who tries to seek new experiences. And these new experiences, new places uh, nurture my imagination and my creativity. So while I mean, I must have been successful in a way, although, you know, what does success mean? It depends on how we define the word success. For some people, you know, you win a Golden Globe and then you want an Oscar. Uh, you win an Oscar, you want two Oscars. You know, so success is very relative, uh, I think. But you, 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 are, you are very successful in Romania. I mean, in, by any measurement, by any measure, uh, um, in terms of, uh, of uh, the way your, your books were uh, reviewed or the, 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 your, re your readership or the prizes or the fact that you were performed in, in major theaters, uh, it's, um, I think it's not an exaggeration to say that you were um, very successful by, uh, by any measure. And still, you decided to take this immense risk and start here as practically somebody that was totally unknown or almost yeah. totally unknown. But then unknown. maybe I should explain a little bit how I got from yeah, writing poetry to write theater to, to yeah, go yeah. to other countries and so on, because all these things are related. I, I didn't decide, okay, now I want to go to America. Things were building for me and new discoveries uh, were happening. And as you know, mm, I, okay, I'm going to take it from the revolution. <laughs> I was there in the streets of the revolution at, uh, as a college student. So for me, that was the first uh, uh, time when uh, avenues opened up for me to do what I really wanted to do, which meant writing. And um, I started as a journalist in the newly created free press. I was a cultural uh, editor for Adeverul, The Truth. Uh, I was a contributor to- Which Ray for the American uh, viewers is uh, one of the major newspapers in Romania. Yeah, so I actually, I enjoyed very much to be a journalist. I felt I was in like in the middle of things and writing about various events. I remember I was um, actually uh, probably the first one in Romania who interviewed uh, the first woman prime minister of Turkey, Tansu Chiler. I remember I was so excited. I was on the plane after the embargo uh, uh, with Serbia. So all those events, historical events, uh, meant a lot for me in terms of new things, new discoveries, new explorations, and showing me that the world is big, you know, and my world felt small at that time, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, I wanted more. I wanted to discover the world. I wanted to understand um, people. I wanted to understand people from other countries. Uh, and um, I, you know, I published my first uh, books of poetry, In advice for is, housewives yeah. uh, and muses, uh, uh, making love on barbed wire and the outcast. And ever since I've been writing about, you know, outcasts and people who are marginalized, people who are rebels or revolutionaries, um, generally outsiders, people who cannot fully fit in and uh, uh, we need to find a new way of uh, uh, belonging. Um, after the outcast, which was a dramatic poem, um, basically I started to write more theater because the outcast was produced 
on Romanian stages first yeah. mm -hmm. uh, at the Galat Theater, I remember, directed by Vasile Nedelcu. And then uh, in an English translation. In, um, Southeastern uh, Romania. Yeah, yeah, by the Danube. And um, uh, it got translated into English and French. And I ended up in Paris at Théâtre Gérard Philippe de Saint-Denis in 1998 as one of the playwrights uh, in a festival called Du Monde Antier. Um, and that's the first time when I was called a playwright <laughs> and I started to believe it. Um, the French were really great with me as a playwright. I was there in the rehearsal process. It was so excited to be at this um, famed theater, Théâtre Gérard. Have you always been attracted by the theater world? I mean, you, you first, as you, um, as you say, you first uh, emerge as a, as a poet, uh, your uh, first books were uh, of poetry, and then, of course, you migrated to uh, theater. But have you always been attracted uh, by theater or it just came because, you know, you wrote this monologue and just happened. That uh, was... Uh... Yeah, see, it's a long story yeah. on how I got to America. <laughs> it's a lot to talk about. So indeed, um, I was attracted to theater. Mm -hmm. uh, as a journalist, um, I was a theater reviewer as well. Mm -hmm. So I wrote um, theater reviews for a while. I still write some. And um, I would go to theater festivals it was so exciting to be over there with the directors, the actors, uh, the other theater critics and uh, the theater people. Uh, and I absolutely fell in love with theater, with uh, the theater world. And um, as you know, Romania has a very rich uh, theater world. Um, it was really uh, impressive for me to be a part of it. And again, from poetry to theater was a small step for me. <laughs> but hopefully a larger step for, for my career um, because um, it felt necessary for me. I remember a literary critic, uh, Mircea Gitsulescu, who wrote after my um, poetry uh, book, The Outcast, uh, wrote a review saying, after this amazing dramatic poem and poetry that uh, there is everything about Saviana Stanescu. What could she write next? Probably theater. <laughs> and he was right, actually. He was right. So it was uh, probably a necessary <laughs> observation. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I said what I had to say in poetry. I still write, I still write poetry, but not as much as I did. So I imagine that the theater was probably my vocation mm -hmm. because um, I um, realized that I needed to study playwriting. At that time, we didn't have um, uh, playwriting um, programs in universities in Romania. So in 1999, I went to, uh, to study playwriting at the, Sam at the International Theater Academy in Germany, in Ruhr, the Summer International Theater Academy. And I studied playwriting in English. That was the, the language in which people studied mm -hmm. at that time uh, at this academy. Um, I wrote my first um, very short play in English. And um, my mentors were Phyllis Naj and David Harrower, uh, two very respected playwrights. David Harrower, a British, a Scottish playwright who won the Olivier Award, and Phyllis Naj, um, an American playwright and screenwriter who people might know, uh, whom people might know from um, uh, the screenplay for Carol, the movie with uh, Kate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. And um, after starting to write for theater and these avenues opening up for me, I got another fellowship uh, to be a writer in residence in Vienna, a Kultur Kontakt fellowship to write a play about Egon Schiele. So I needed to do my research in Vienna. Uh, then British Council in 2000 organized for me a series of, uh, of poetry readings and performances uh, throughout uh, the UK. And that was very exciting to spend uh, three months in the UK and present my poetry and poetry performance. So again, it was a sort of next step from uh, poetry to poetry performance. Uh, and after that, 
um, actually I got an invitation to be a part of the uh, Royal Court Theater International Program for playwrights. And I said yes initially, but at the same time, I got accepted with the Fulbright grant at New York University, the School of the Arts. Yeah. So I had to make this difficult decision. They were not at the same time, but going to London would have meant I couldn't prepare for, for New York. Yeah, because the program at uh, uh, Royal Court uh, um, Theatre was, uh, I mean, your, I think your play would have been performed or would have been staged by them or something. So you would have spent quite a lot of time in, uh, in London. Yeah, um, yeah. Now that you ask so me, you have to have make this difficult decision. Indeed, I mean, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's wow. It's a, uh, it's a very, very difficult decision. London or <laughs> New York. And you are right. You are right. You know, I, I wouldn't say success, but you know, I was uh, quite known in Romania, and my career in Europe uh, was starting to develop. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that they also published my play, Final Countdown in, uh, in uh, Paris, in French, and it was very well received. In Romania, I won the UNITER award for best play of the year UNITER, in 2000 for the inflatable apocalypse. UNITER, UNITER, UNITER what is this? Uh, the Theater Guild in Romania, UNITER. Okay, yeah, uh, I know what it is, of course, but uh, it's important to let uh, our viewers as well, uh, to, to know as well what it is. Yeah, it's a, it's, uh, the most prestigious, the most prestigious uh, uh, words and the word in this case in uh, in Romanian theater. Yeah, so quite a, quite a big achievement. And indeed, um, I felt I was up on the wave. Maybe that's the way to put it because I did feel at that time that things were happening for me, and um, I was up. On, why on why uh, why did you choose uh, New York? Well, I was very excited to, to go to New York. Honestly, I, I don't know if I would have gone if it was um, another city. Uh, New York had for me this uh, uh, aura of uh, the capital of the theater world. And um, from a personal uh, point of view, my grandmother actually was born in the US and she was um, an American citizen all her life, but we couldn't say that during the totalitarian regime. And her sisters were American citizens. So in my um, family, there was always this American dream present. We would uh, get a package from our relatives from the US uh, with worn clothes. And for us, they were like, oh my God, the, the clothes from America. Uh, they had this kind of uh, aura and magic uh, uh, feeling that would give us. So on one hand, it was this thing that all my family was like, oh, you're going to America. And uh, uh, secondly, or, or maybe firstly, the fact that New York felt the, the center of the world for me. I knew it from the movies, you know, the, the movie set uh, settings. I was watching at the time uh, Sex and the City, <laughs> the TV series, and it felt very exciting that, you know, uh, a writer like Carrie Bradshaw would have such a fascinating life in, in New York. So I had all these images uh, about America and particularly New York. Uh, like a magic place where I needed to be. I needed to push myself to be and um, where, you know, life can start over for you. New York, New York. <laughs> if you make it there, you make it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I went to, to New York. I didn't fully realize, honestly, what meant to be a graduate student <laughs> in New York because I chose not to be just a visiting artist, but I got enrolled full time okay, in the awesome. MA in performance oh, yeah. studies at New York University. And it was uh, hard. I had to keep up with all those um, great people, my colleagues. Um, so I had to push myself indeed to start from, from scratch as a um, uh, graduate student, as a, uh, an artist now writing in English and creating uh, new works in English. And um, most of all, I guess, uh, again, the circumstances. For me, I, I got involved in these big social events like the revolution in Romania. And then I got to New York uh, two weeks before 9-11. Uh, 
and 9-11 completely uh, managed to uh, shake our lives and um, again re made, uh, made us rethink our lives. For me and my classmates at NYU, that was the year when we, we created lots of projects about 9-11. We really bonded as a team, as, as a class, because it was the year of 9-11. And we all felt like we belonged to New York because, you know, that wounded city, we were part of, we were a, a part of it. experience and the aftermath to, together. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, um, it was very powerful to experience that kind of trauma with the city, with the city of New York. And I fell in love with New York all over again. Uh, for me, uh, honestly, it might sound silly that love for New York um, never, <laughs> never stopped. <laughs> Yeah, I think there are many, many other people in your situation. <laughs> it is not a, something, an, an unusual feeling towards, uh, towards this, um, this an amazing, amazing city. Uh, in time, you have, uh, we have, you have come to know the theater world of New York uh, inside out. Uh, um, in years, we have had uh, fascinating conversations about the, um, about this um, special place, this special world, this uh, uh, is also a, a very difficult, uh, a a difficult place. And you, uh, by profession, by vocation, of course, you you know a lot about uh, the New York uh, theater. Um, what does it, what does it take to be successful here in New York? What are the mechanics? Of uh, of uh, success, of recognitions, of recognition, of um, breaking through uh, in this uh, in this tough place for an artist. Again, I, I must go back to what um, my professor Gary Garrison uh, told us in the MFA in Dramatic Writing program that um, I completed after the MA in Performance Studies at NYU. Um, I was offered a fellowship to issue remission to continue with an MFA in dramatic writing. So I, of course I took that opportunity. It was actually very important for me to study uh, playwriting, dramatic writing in English. Um, the program MFA in dramatic writing uh, focuses on playwriting, TV writing and screenwriting. Mm -hmm. So I got um, a little bit of training in, uh, in uh, everything, uh, but my thesis was in playwriting. So my teacher, uh, Gary Garrison said, uh, what is success? It's going to be how each of you defines the word success. Don't get stuck into this idea that you need to, to break through a particular theater or you need to be on Broadway or you need to be in Hollywood. Success is how you define it as an artist. And an artist that has um, integrity defines their own uh, word for success and their own concept. So for me, uh, success became writing in English better and better, mm -hmm. uh, being on the same level or even better than many of my uh, American born friends and colleagues, um, pushing myself to, to get better and better with my place. And um, very importantly, to be relevant, to be relevant in this culture. Mm -hmm. Because as playwrights, who do we write for? We write for our audiences and we write for ourselves. We want to say something. I need to, to speak up my truth. I've always uh, uh, liked to speak truth to power. So it's very important to me to, to be able to tell my truth, uh, both stylistically and in terms of the story, the characters, the message of my plays. And it's, of course, uh, uh, very important to be relevant and to reach uh, the audience. If a few people tell me that they, uh, they were touched by my plays and my characters and the story, the, um, the people were relevant for them, uh, that's for me a success. So I didn't think in those terms that um, I need to, to break through, but I did think in terms of I need to get better and better. And I just approached each project with the idea that, okay, I'm gonna do it well, and um, it's gonna be a great experience and uh, 
it will reach uh, uh, the New York audiences. And that's what I did, you know. I, uh, of course, I knew about La Mama Theater from Andrei Sherpan and the whole uh, aura of uh, fame and success that uh, the La Mama Theater has in Romania because oh, Andrei yeah. Sherpan. Um, so I was happy to, to be able to work with La Mama. It also helped, it was um, downtown close to NYU. And I really love downtown New York. I became what um, uh, many people call a downtown artist. Downtown artists are, and I'm sorry to generalize because I don't like generalizations, but um, downtown artists are ex more experimental. They try new things. They might not make too much money, yeah. but they are the people who uh, push uh, uh, their limits and uh, the limits of uh, the artistic expression. So I, ex I was actually very proud to be a downtown artist and I worked mostly in uh, uh, downtown theaters like La Mama for a, for a long while. And then I got <laughs> promoted to uh, larger off-Broadway theaters like Women's Project, to, uh, which is Midtown. But um, uh, you, you said something very important about being relevant. Um, what, what does it take to be relevant today? Uh, how do you, how would you define relevance today? And and um, and uh, uh, also um, also about um, relevance. Uh, what does it take for a um, for a play um, to uh, to find uh, not only an audience but a producer, a theater to um, uh, to back it. Is it, um, um, I don't know, political awareness, ideological alignment, uh, brilliant, extraordinary craftsmanship? Uh, uh, what what are the, um, a, um, a producer or a theater, one of these important theaters you, you've mentioned, even though they are smaller, off-Broadway or off-Broadway, off they are very important, as you rightly said, for the, 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 the ferment of creativity and, uh, and uh, um, important, uh, important um, um, even movements and shows uh, have emerged from, uh, from this milieu. Uh, so what is relevance uh, today? What is relevance for this theater? What is relevance for these uh, producers of independent theater? I'm not talking about uh, Broadway. This is a separate conversation. Yes, exactly, because the, the commercial theater uh, is a little right. different. I mean, uh, the um, independent theater. <laughs> uh, well, I would say, first of all, it depends on each theater and each producer what uh, they are looking for. Um, usually people do try to, to bring uh, things that are relevant for their audiences. Mm -hmm. So each theater knows very well their audiences and uh, they bring uh, certain uh, performances and artists that might be uh, relevant for those audiences that might tell stories and um, create characters that are relevant for those audiences in the sense that uh, the stories resonate to those people. Um, the stories um, are interesting for those people. The characters are representative for those people. People can see themselves in the characters on stage. People can see themselves in uh, the stories on stage. Uh, so relevance is obviously associated with um, the references that uh, the audiences have, with uh, what they would like to see, what they can uh, resonate with. Uh, as, as a playwright, do you need to have a certain outlook, a certain um, I don't know, ideological, political convictions in order to be relevant for the public of the New York Independent Theater? What do you think? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. I would say that um, the theater world in New York is actually very small. <laughs> People know each other. And uh, what really matters in, uh, on the New York theater scenes, downtown and of Broadway and on Broadway is um, the relationships that people create with each other. Um, so th what I tell my students as well is it's very important to, to have integrity, to have artistic integrity 
and to to be able to build this relationship with other with relationships with other theater artists in a way that's honest that's genuine that is not arrogant you know nobody likes an arrogant person or a person who's preachy difficult. a preachy author or a preachy event i mean yes so uh, relationships are very important uh, especially because um, i feel that um, in new york uh, being a playwright uh, centered theater world um the playwrights uh, develop their plays from the first scenes with actors, a director, mm -hmm. uh, with the play development center. We are very much involved in the process of production, right? Yeah, the process the is, very, is, mm -hmm. uh, is very important. Uh, the process is what uh, makes a play um, interesting for producers and for, for other theaters. So what actually happens is that uh, as a playwright, you bring the first scenes, you bring the first draft, you read it with actors and the director, you invite people to a stage reading. And that's when uh, producers and artistic directors and literary managers of different theaters show up and they might uh, suggest that play for the season of their theater. So it is a long process, actually. It, it is not happening as some people might imagine that you send your play and uh, someone discovers it wow, it's in fantastic. a pile. And, <laughs> yeah. Your and, name on the marquee, right? <laughs> it's not happening like that. You know, it's very rare, if ever. <laughs> oh, this is a great play. <gasps> I'm going to put it on Broadway. No. Everything uh, is about these relationships that you develop with networks. Uh, working together, collective uh, uh, effort. Uh, very, uh, very, uh, very interesting. And also very interesting when, when you say that the independent New York stage is very much centered on the playwright. So everything originates in writing and this, uh, in, the, in the playwright who develops the, the concept, the project, the scenes, and then, then everything uh, everything starts from from there. Well, I would nuance that. I probably off Broadway and Broadway would be more playwright center mm -hmm. centered, although Broadway is also into the big musicals. Uh, the downtown theater world, yes, has uh, is doing many new plays and it, mm -hmm. it does have a focus on new work, but there are also ensembles and collectives and mm -hmm. people who devise work together. And that's different than a playwright developing a new work. So I don't want people to imagine that it is a collective creation. No, no, on, on the work. contrary. No, but it's a, the process is not, uh, uh, it's, it involves several people, even though of course the author remains the author of the play, but there are so many inputs and probably that's that makes the effervescence of this, uh, of this milieu, of this way of, uh, of approaching theater uh, that has been, uh, I think, uh, responsible for so many, uh, so many successes. Uh, you, you work with a lot of uh, actors, of course, you have, um, you have students, you have, uh, you have the actors in your, in the plays that, you know, performances that you are in, uh, involved with. Um, sometimes or you know quite often um, immigrant actors are typecast typecast as um, well as immigrants uh, what about the immigrant uh, playwrights do you feel that you are typecast in the sense that people expect something from you to write about your east european heritage to your East European experiences, maybe to your communist experiences. Is there a typecast uh, in, uh, in, your, uh, in your experience? Well, um, I wouldn't call it typecast, but I think uh, that uh, there are some expectations um, somehow in place, um, but they have more to do with the fact that um, uh, playwrights do explore their identities in their place here uh, in the US. Uh, I feel that um, new playwriting and good plays are um, 
very much um, exploring uh, the playwright's identity or a community uh, the playwright is a part of. Uh, and um, especially with international playwrights like um, like myself, yes, there is uh, probably an expectation that uh, uh, you will um, shed some light or offer some insights into that particular culture. In my case, uh, Romania. Um, I wouldn't say you know that it's like <laughs> written in stone, um, but um, speaking about relevance, somehow the audience is might expect that you as a Romanian playwright would bring uh, some Romanian stories on, on their stages. Um, and um, that would make sense for them because it means that playwright, the playwright is exploring their own identity, their own community. Um, because here in uh, the theater is uh, very strong in terms of community engagement. Um, there are community of artists that support each other and it makes lots of sense because their voices need to be heard. Uh, of course, the, there are the black uh, artists that need to be heard because black lives matter and black stories matter and um, uh, they need to have a more prominent uh, role and uh, limelight on the American stages. There are the Latinx uh, uh, artists Not the stages, in America. Uh, in Hollywood, in other places. Yeah, the Middle Eastern. So there are many communities that are very strong and well-formed. The in indigenous theater artists now are trying to have a stronger voice on American stages. So given this um, aspect of, um, you know, multi-rooted uh, belonging and multiple identities that, um, need to find ways of uh, telling stories that are representative for their communities. Uh, people need to see themselves on stages. And um, now uh, the audiences in New York are not anymore a majority of uh, white, older, middle-class audiences as they used to be. So new audiences are coming to the theater, younger audiences, audiences of different colors, uh, black audiences, and many others. So people need to see themselves on their stages, on the American stages. Uh, and that's why there is a, a revolution in theater right now as well. Uh, people are trying to tell stories that represent uh, more people from this revolution and subjects yeah. not in the way you tell these stories right or is it uh, does it have uh, does it have um, also aesthetical uh, consequences or only you know what what you talk about and know how you talk about or how you stage or is it uh, you know everything that uh, uh, that defines this revolution well, uh, in aesthetic terms, I hesitate to say that there is an aesthetic canon here because there isn't. That's the beauty of, of America. Um, the mainstream canon is permanently challenged. So we cannot say that this particular aesthetics or style is the, the good one and people are aspiring to do that because that's not true. Everybody tries to bring their own aesthetics and their own styles and their own topics. Uh, so I would say that there is an openness for various styles and various um, aesthetics. Um, I could adventure to say that maybe the mainstream aesthetic could be the um, uh, white American family, for instance, white American family stories, middle class stories. Uh, but um, I feel that uh, that particular canon has been challenged massively in the last 20 years. And now people come with different aesthetics, different styles, different dramatic structures um, that are inspired from different traditions of storytelling. But when you when you say that uh, uh, that uh, you know other stories and backgrounds are coming to the fore, um, do, do you mean that uh, I mean if as an Eastern European or a, a playwright with Eastern European your origin, you are invited to talk about topics that are not necessarily related to your heritage? I mean you can talk about let's say um, African-American experience here in the United States or the native American experience or other experiences, or you have to be 
a Native American in order to write about uh, your heritage or you have to be an Af African-American um, playwright in order to tackle um, topics, subjects, themes that are related to the African-American experience. Uh, or, you know, it's themes, it's subjects, and uh, no matter what your background, you can tackle them. Well, I would say, you know, you can write whatever you want. The, the problem is uh, um, the legitimacy of that kind of writing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, is it okay for you as a white Eastern European writing, writer to, to write, I don't know, uh, a black woman character? It, it depends if I do my research, if I consult with, um, uh, and I, I work, I collaborate with a black um, um, actor and director. Uh, I feel that, um, if I do it in a responsible way, and if we, we are doing our research and we collaborate with people from that community, um, we can do it in a, in, a, uh, in a way that's relevant, but also has integrity. As you know, I, I've already written many plays actually with oh. characters uh, from other communities. Right. Uh, Be Trapped Inside a Window is the most recent example. Um, and I have another one, Gun Hill. That's in, why I'm asking, where, because you have uh, come out of, you know, what would be uh, narrowly defined as your heritage identity and uh, started to explore uh, characters and situations that are not related to your, uh, to your personal uh, experience, as you well, are. I, I don't think, you know, no, I mean, nobody kind of puts a gun on your head and says, write Eastern European stories. Things oh. are, are pretty open, but it does matter. You, you need to do it in a responsible way and you need to do it in a way that the people have the references for those stories and how do you tell that story in a way that lands with, with the audience, with the American audiences. However, about Eastern European topics, I would say that, um, Maybe there was um, more of a curiosity about them during the, uh, you know, Cold War and Iron Curtain. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, you know, when people are in this kind of political uh, circumstances, uh, they were more curious to hear from an artist from Eastern Europe, from behind the Iron Curtain. That's how Andrei Sherban, that's how Andrei Kodrescu got here. And um, they, they were very, you know, interesting artists and people were very curious about their work. If I am to say something about that, actually it's much more difficult now to tell a Eastern European story, a Romanian story that's relevant on American stages because uh, people have, you know, other political references, other things that they need to talk about at this time. History has moved on and other places in the world or other, other topics are, the burning issues of the of the day. So it's important to have this uh, dialogue with uh, immediate history, with uh, contemporary history, but defined in this, you know, yesterday history. Yeah, I think that's something that I uh, probably learned here in the US that we need to respond to our history. Mm -hmm. We need to respond to our immediate history. When I was in Romania, you know, I was writing things that were more abstract, more absurd, uh, this kind of, you know, larger <laughs> stories based only on fictionalized characters yeah. and um, absurd um, circumstances. While here in the US, I indeed learned to, to write about more specific topics that affect uh, me, my identity, the other people's yeah. identities. The, the political circumstances, and yeah, the history. Uh, the history that is being made with us, mm -hmm. here, near us, um, we are here, you know? We, we, we shouldn't ignore it, we couldn't ignore it, we didn't ignore it when <laughs> we write about it. Definitely, you, you can't ignore history in the, in the United States. Um, as, um, not uh, not as an artist or so, but uh, neither as uh, as um, as a lay person. Um, you have worked with young people a lot, and you're working with young people. And um, and as an educator, of course, you uh, get in touch with them uh, on daily basis and 
attract, you nurture them, you develop them. Why are they choosing a theatrical career? What do, how, what do they invest in theater? What do they think theater is able to do for them, or for the community? How they define not only their career, but theater as a powerful art form, if you want. I'm actually very impressed with our theater students. When I was at NYU and here at Ithaca College, the theater students are so passionate, so hardworking. Uh, I mean, they work from you know the morning to late at night, rehearsals every day. It's so impressive how much they work and the way they collaborate and um, are ready to, to, to tell their stories, to, to be engaged in the community of artists. And of course, at this time, you know, when theaters are closed, it's even more difficult, but also you can see that people are still making theater. They are making theater on Zoom, they are making theater on stages with social distance, they are making theater in the parks, and, you know, wherever. Um, I actually think that um, uh, the young theater artists that I've met and worked with and my students are impressive. They do so much, they put so much heart in what they do, and uh, they're just, um, you know, future artists that will give it all like <laughs> the others do. Again, it's a small world. We are all part of this community and they know that. However, as I said, now everyone is reckoning with what theater will be after the pandemic. How are we redefining uh, the American theater? I've saved the question for that as well. <laughs> of course, we'll we'll talk uh, we'll talk about that. But before that, I I know that you are um, of course you have a career in uh, in the United States, but um, you're you're still well known and revered in uh, in Romania, and you have started to commute between. New York, Ithaca, and uh, and uh, Romania, where your um, your uh, plays are performed, your books uh, continue to appear, um, and I've noticed that with um, several other uh, Romanian American artists or uh, uh, Romanian artists living in in the UK or in Europe, that you know this bridge, this divide, this uh, divide, this. Um, uh, this fracture, you know, between their new life and old life is no longer uh, there, is no longer um, um, present. Um, how do you see this, uh, this change? Why, why do you go so often to Romania or uh, um, every time you have the, the opportunity? Why is it still important to have a voice there uh, as well? Well, as I told you, for me, it's a matter of relevance. If I feel that my stories, a particular story is more relevant in Romania, mm -hmm. I go there to write it, like I did with the Revolution Project, right. uh, Kilometer Zero. Uh, I spent my sabbatical semester, I could have spent it anywhere. I went back to Romania last fall, 30 years after the Romanian Revolution, to immerse myself again in the sites and the uh, environment of Bucharest, where I was uh, uh, at the revolution, and to write a play about the Romanian Revolution. I did um, stage readings. Um, we presented it during the International Theatre Platform. Um, and now, actually, the play uh, had its opening at the Odeon Theatre in Bucharest, um, directed by a young... One of the main theatres in, uh, yeah. in uh, Bucharest. Yeah, one of the most prestigious theatres in Bucharest. Um, maybe a Broadway-like house. And uh, uh, the it's young director... Theater, I would say. Yeah, Andre Majeri is a young director who wasn't even born at the revolution. So it's a very interesting dialogue for me, creative dialogue uh, with this young director and the actors from different generations, um, Diana Bugarin, Nicoleta Lefter, Diana Georgian, Alexandru Papadopoul. So I was really happy that the artistic director of the Odeon, Christian Chofron, really, um, put a bet on us and this project. And um, it's happening now on the Odeon stages with social distance and, uh, you know, um, an audience. So I'm very excited that um, that happened. I think I, it was the right thing to do to go there and write that play in Romanian. I'm not sure that I would translate that play into English because I don't think 
it might be relevant in English. I feel that here I might need to tell the story of the revolution or other stories about my life during the totalitarian system in a different way. So it's also about how I feel, where I feel the story is relevant, uh, what inspires me for that particular story, what artists, what places. It's amazing um, that you are able to write it in a different way because you know that the audience is, would uh, expect uh, something else or would, under, uh, would understand or not understand it if written in a certain way. Well, it's really funny in a way that when I got back into writing in Romanian, I got back into my old poetic style. <laughs> While here in English, because I studied at NYU, I studied a certain way of writing in English. I feel that my um, American plays written in English are more grounded, um, are a little bit more realistic, although I still have some fantastic scenes and absurd scenes, but they are more grounded in realism. While my um, Romanian plays, including this one, they end up being more poetic, more ambiguous, <laughs> more abstract. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, very interesting. Um, I I think it's uh, we have a small technical problem. You can still see me. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, you. yeah, okay. I yeah, see you know, for suddenly my <laughs> suddenly my screen, uh, you know, was. <laughs> covered with other things. Uh, but uh, it's, um, it's online, it's cy cyberspace, right? And, th uh, and that's my, um, my next question uh, about, um, we hope to see your theater, your, we hope to see your theater um, performances, the, the Bucharest, the Odeon performances performed here in, um, in, uh, in New York. But we have to wait uh, a bit for that. New York is still closed for theater. The uh, New York theaters are closed. Uh, um, theater people are frantically trying to find a solution to uh, to bring the the audiences back to the um, to the theater halls. Uh, but it's still uh, it's still very uh, very difficult. Um, how do you see this situation? What do you, um, how do you see that, uh, the, uh, how, in, on your opinion, because I'm sure that in your uh, department and with your peers, you are talking a lot about, about this. How do you see the recovery of the New York uh, theater? Would it be a slow recovery? Would it be a, a rapid one coming back to the old ways um, overnight? Um, will something be forever changed? How, how do you see the future of uh, um, theater life in New York after the pandemic when hopefully everything uh, comes to an end? Yes, uh, you're right. I've, I've been talking a lot about this with my students, with um, my peers. Um, New York theater and American theater is going through this um, large reckoning both in terms of the pandemic and this online theater and in terms of the anti-racist work that people need to do based on the letter that our black indigenous uh, and people of color artists uh, sent to the community. We see you white American theater. There is a website, you can check all the signatures. There are many of the artists that I worked with who signed this letter, Tamila Woodard, Rajiv Joseph, Liz Tommy, so great artists. So uh, people must deal and must um, rethink their perspectives and work to, to implement um, anti-racist um, strategies, sustained anti-racist uh, work that needs to be done in the American theater. And we have to talk about that. And uh, then in aesthetic terms, I feel that uh, the online theater, uh, might have, you know, mean something at the intersection of theater and film. It's, you know, it's, it is its own genre in a way. I feel that theater might bring more uh, multimedia techniques because of that. And um, uh, we'll still be online theater even after the pandemic. And in terms of uh, the physical theater on stages, uh, well, you know, 
I'm not sure what's going to happen with the commercial theater with Broadway because they need to make money. So I don't know how that will happen. Probably they will still bring lots of musicals in the beginning in 2021 so they can uh, make the money they need in order to invest in a place, in new plays that are more provocative and cutting edge. So yeah, the commercial theater, we haven't talked enough about that. Of course, it needs to make money and that of course the, needs to, to play to these larger audiences that are not only New York audiences, they are the tourists as well, people from other towns, people from other countries. So there is a lot of you know large musicals and larger commercial shows that happen on Broadway. Um, that um, need to appeal the masses. <laughs> so you expect uh, quite uh, significant uh, changes. Uh, probably theater will never be uh, the same or some of the innovations that have been developed now will, uh, will stay with us in the future as well. Because to be our, entirely honest, I expect it to be more of a change when um, uh, this pandemic happened and the first online shows started to, to happen. And, and I had a few plays online and they were very innovative and interesting. I actually hoped that uh, uh, this would mean that American theaters and New York theaters would bring more global voices onto their virtual stages because it's so easy to, to, to do a play uh, with people from everywhere. But it hasn't actually happening that. I feel that the theaters actually work with the same artists they've been working with. They gave them some fellowships and uh, the only grants they, so they can to survive. The, yeah. On the internet and they do pretty much uh, yeah. the same thing, I mean, in terms of... Uh, and yeah. again, resources are limited, so people needed to take care of the artists that they have invested in, in terms of um, fellowships and commissions and grants. Um, my hope is, though, that it must really happen um, a more global revolution in theater. I, I do want to be able to, to work from wherever, from Bucharest, from Ithaca, from New York, with theaters all around the world. Um, if this is not happening now, when there's so much theater online, when is this going to happen? Let's stop being so insular, so, uh, so prisoners of our own little uh, community, I would say. Let's open up to this larger global community and global stories. I think we, will, we would all benefit from that. It's a fantastic message for the, the end of our uh, conversation. But um, because we, uh, we like to have an interactive uh, program and we welcome uh, questions and we're very happy that we have uh, uh, received some, uh, we will, um, we will uh, spend our last two, three minutes of our, um, of our encounter uh, with um, a couple of uh, questions coming from um, uh, people who are uh, watching us. Woody is asking us, uh, have you or your students found new subject matter for your writing in recent, in recent political events in Eastern Europe and the influence of Romanians now living abroad? So the, what's happening in Romania, I don't, recent political events in Eastern Europe, I don't know what you are talking, Woody, but uh, definitely it's very interesting um, to know whether you have been interested in exploring the life of Romanian American communities, what's happening in diaspora communities. I mean, many of my plays actually have uh, Romanian American characters and I, I totally explore uh, the life of uh, the Romanian diaspora and uh, this Eastern European diaspora. Absolutely, that those characters are part of my plays, Waxing West, uh, Lenin Shoe, Useless, uh, uh, Toys, uh, and I have many plays, particularly with uh, Romanian or Eastern European characters. In terms of my students, and I'm producing right now a festival of uh, short student plays that will happen on Saturday, they, they write about you know their own themes and what to, concerns them. I'm only guiding them and mentoring them in terms of dramatic structure, how to flesh out characters, dramatic journeys, dramatic intentions, uh, the craft of playwriting. They write about whatever they want to write. About. 
And another, uh, another question about writing in Romanian and English. When an idea for a new play starts to gain space in your mind, it is easier for you to write it in Romanian or English. At this point, it's easier for me to write in English, probably because I went to school, to graduate school, and I, I learned to write my first place, strong place in English at NYU. It's much easier for me to write in English at this point. Actually, I had to push myself to write in Romanian when I went back to Romania. <laughs> to, to, uh, the words wouldn't come to me. It's awful. But um, again, I like to do it well. So I spent my sabbatical semester in Romania and I watched Romanian TV and reread Romanian books and read new Romanian books so I could write a good play in Romanian. But um, I think I write better and easier in English at this point. Well, uh, Saviana Sanescu, thank you for uh, spending um, a little bit more than uh, an hour with, uh, with us. It's been a, a fascinating uh, conversation. Uh, it is a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, career, artistic career and uh, career as, uh, as an educator. Um, I'd like to th thank uh, our viewers for their loyalty, for uh, their um, very flattering uh, words about what we do, not only in the uh, Ferraru uh, series, but the other series, uh, many other series that form our uh, online uh, program of uh, Romanian culture uh, promotion. And of course, to um, thank our um, um, co-producer of uh, this uh, series, um, uh, Transconcentric for helping us um, uh, create this um, uh, this program. Saviana Stanescu, uh, it's been wonderful uh, to be talking to you. Thank you, Doro, for the invitation and goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.